Hey guys, and we're back with another episode of the Player Experiment, where today we're going to be doing Cesc Fabregas of Manchester United, who is currently linked with them, who is at Barcelona at the moment. The transfer fee is around £30 million that they were looking to spend for him to join the club. He is valued on this game at £30.5 million as a 26-year-old attacking midfielder or preferred central midfielder role, which I presume will be playing for Manchester United. So we're gonna fast forward around three, four season, four about around four season till he gets to his uh, thirty years of age, and that is when he'll start to de- decrease in playability, and that's when we will end this episode to see how well he does in his peaked areas of his career. So we're gonna be right back after the first year has passed, and we'll see the results. We're back after the first year has passed with Fabregas. Let's have a look at how well he played in the first season at Man United. He played a total of 29 games, scoring 7 goals for the league, and he played 6 games internationally, scoring 1 goal, with very high average ratings of 7.77 in the league and 7.37 internationally. He Let's have a look at the history. He set, had 12 assists, which is very, very good for uh, the position he had been playing which will have been the more central midfield role. Yeah, he didn't play really that many attacking midfielder roles. He played four, assuming the players that were there didn't probably were probably injured or out. He is only convinced in the centre midfield role and the attacking midfield role to play. So we'll look how he get guided them in the competitions. He has been a change in management, Marco Biesla. He uh, guided them when we were he Manchester United were second in the league, miles behind Manchester City. And um, they did okay, I suppose. I mean, Man City probably spent big money. Big, big money. I mean, yeah, they will have spent a lot of money this season to, trying to win the league. So, if we look at the rest of the results, if we look at the show filters. Uh, the Champions League, they managed to... They got into the semis and got knocked out by Zenit. It's about that. It's disappointing. They should be beating them. They're perfectly honest. But a team like Manchester United after beating them 3-0. But losing 4-0. So, I mean, yeah, Zenit obviously mocked it more and ended up winning. Capital One Cup, they lost 3-1 in a replay. No, they didn't. Capital One Cup, they won it. They beat Manchester City 3-1 in the final and beat and won. Um... Fabregas playing that game with a 7.10 average match rating, which was good, but Hamshik was about the same. Yep, yeah, he, he seemed pretty average, nothing special. Every cup they did get knocked out by Norwich in a second round, sixth, fifth round replay with Fabregas again, doing very well, but Manchester United obviously just couldn't win. So we're going to fast forward another season and see how Cesc Fabregas does, and we'll be back with the results. Welcome back to the third part of the video where we're going to look at Cesc Fabregas' second season at Manchester United. Let's have a look how he did now. Let's see. He is now at... If I turn it up. He is now 27, valued at 40 million. 40 million. Well, he must play played really well. This, this must be the peak of his career, surely. 30 games this season, 5 goals for the, in the league and 7 games, 3 goals international. A 7.75 match or average match rating, which is so like it was better than last season. Mm, no. It wasn't better than last season. Mm. You got 11 assists, 5 goals and 4 man of the matches, so this isn't his best season so far. The first season at Manchester United was the best. Let's see if he some if they maybe it's because they won the league or some trophies. He maybe he went up. So well, they've kept same management, which is uh, preferable to the club. They in the Premier League they finished second again. They need to they need to up the game. Really. They have up the game this season. It was only by five points. So, I mean, suppose that's good and it's not good enough really. In the Champions League, they they won. They beat the likes of Lyon, Bayern Munich, Juventus, Dortmund, and won the Champions League. Um, so that's fantastic. And the in the in the Champions League game, Fabregas got a match rating of eight point two, which is absolutely fantastic. So that was a fantastic season now for Manchester United. Fantastic season for Fabregas, and it can't get any better really. I mean, they met yeah, they did lose the Capital One Cup final, but I mean, who cares? They won they won the Champions League, the FA Cup. They lost to Brighton. In Man United's eyes, I don't think they care. They won the Champions League, and that is fantastic. Fabregas had a great season, 
and I assume that Fabregas will want to keep on a Man United. So we're going to fast forward another season for the third season to see how he starts to cope with Premier League football as he starts to reach the age of 30. And this is the third part of the episode today where we're looking at Cesc Fabregas at Manchester United. We're just going to go on to the Man United there we go, and on to Cesc Fabregas. His value has decreased dramatically. A very, very huge den into the value of Cesc Fabregas. This could be... He only played 12 league games. Well, I think he was injured. I think he must have been injured a lot of the season. Hmm. Yes. Yeah, a lot. I mean, what that racks of uh, seven months of um, injury. Broken ankle, hip injury, and a broken foot. Two broken bones in the past. God knows how long, which is not very good for Cesc Fabregas. So, this year has not been a great year for Fabregas. Um, he still looked like he was in fast, fantastic form in the first 12 games in the league. 7.48 average rate and a 7.23 for Spain. His current injury is to last another 2-5 to five weeks and probably should be back for the start of the season. Um, can't really look at much else now that he's been injured. I think, again, he's been playing the central midfield role more than the central attacking role. Um... Premier League, they finished fifth, which is mediocre at best. I suppose that we expect them to do much better than that, to be honest. I mean, with Fabregas out for this long, that was a major blow into their cups. So let's have a look at the Champions League. They won it again. They won it again. They have a new manager, Diego Simeone, and they actually won the Champions League again. Two years running. Manchester United have won the Champions League. They lost third round again. Who cares? It was Man City, tough team. Reading, they lost in the FA Cup. But I mean, they won the Champions League. What other bigger competition can you win? That is fantastic. I can't, I, honestly, without Fabregas, and they managed to do that. So we're going to go one more year now when Seth Fabregas is going to be. The age of, I think it's 30. He'll be 29, so he'll be coming on to his uh, late 20s. And this is where you'll see Fabregas fade away into the distance now for Man United. I mean, he's not needed there. To, it's been shown that Manchester United can do it without him. Because they have signed or got better quality in the team than Fabregas. Fabregas is getting on now. They've brought, probably brought you a few young youth players through. And um, they obviously just... Don't need him. Let's have a look. Ha yeah, Hamshek, Biscuits. I think it was Zaha. They've got a lot of good players. I mean, they've still got Carrick and Fletcher. I mean, yeah, there's not much. Fab Fabregas's career will come to an end soon. I think. I think he'll just fade away as Manchester United. It's been proven they don't really need him anymore. He's still a fantastic player, no doubt about it, and he'll probably carry on his career somewhere else. But I can see him coming away from Manchester United now and not doing as well but we'll see in the net final year we'll look at him and we'll see if I'm proved completely wrong or my prediction is correct and we'll be back in a short moment Hey guys, and it's Chris back with the final part of the episode of Cesc Fabregas at Manchester United. I would like to say now, if you are thinking, why am I so quiet? It's because it's currently 3 o'clock in the morning and trying to make a video at 3 o'clock in the morning with your parents and brother and sister in the next room is a pretty weary task and I need to make sure I'm not too loud. Well, we've got Fabregas already up already. If I look around, and he's not played great. He's had three goals in 23 games, which isn't fantastic for Fabregas. I, th I think I am right with the fact that he's fading away from the Manchester United team. We'll have a look if he's had any injuries or that, but I don't know. I've not really looked at anything yet so far. I mean, four months. He was out for another an extra month than expected with his broken foot, and he was out for what, about five weeks. So I mean he's not been up too much. He's he's been able to play the games, 
I just don't think he's been playing them, to be honest. He didn't play well for Spain. Eight games, no goals. 6.86 average right in there. So, if we look at how well they did, they finished second again. Which is okay, I suppose. I mean, Fabregas hasn't played well, so it was fantastic. They finished loads behind Man City. They didn't get to the final of the Champions League. They lost in the Cup or one cup, and they also lost in the FA Cup. Super Cup they managed to win, which is fantastic and uh, a good achievement. And um, there's not much to say now. I think I was right with my prediction that Fabregas will start to fade away and not play as many games as he did and maybe move away from the club. He's not a player that's needed at the club, and I think they're going to need to replace him sooner rather than later. He's... Um, He's got a lot of players there battling for that position now. I mean, you've got the likes of Sergio Busquets, you've got the likes of Tom Cleverley, Marek Hamshek, Shinzi Kagawa, Wilfred Zaha, Wayne Rooney can play in the centre midfield role. There's just a lot of players that can play in these roles that are younger, better and than Fabregas. And even now, he's, he's on the bench, so he'll just start to fade away, I think, and maybe leave in January. Or maybe at the start of this season. But uh, I would like to take this moment to thank you for watching the video. And uh, I would be, I'd be unbelievably grateful if you could hit the like button and subscribe. And I will be back in the next episode of Player Experiments very soon. Thank you for watching and have a wonderful day.